Consider South America and Africa. Don't they kind of look like they fit together, you know, like puzzle pieces? Well, they actually did. But about 130 million years ago, South America was like, bye, and slowly started drifting away. These days, it's around 1,800 miles from Africa, and it's still on the move. Every year, the continent shifts a little more toward the Pacific Ocean. So how's that even happening? Tectonic plates are constantly moving. That's what makes the Earth's surface shift over time, going from this to what we see today. But those movements happen so slowly that you and I can't see them go. So no, Brazilians or Chileans aren't out there feeling their continent inching westward. But the numbers don't lie. South America is moving. And apparently, all at once is to get as far away as possible from this massive underwater mountain range called the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. But what exactly is pushing the land toward the Pacific Ocean? It is the heat inside our planet. Way, way down beneath the ocean, there are cracks in the Earth's crust. And magma, super hot melted rock, rises up through those cracks. When that happens, the magma cools and hardens into solid rock. Over time, this process might build underwater mountains, like the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. And as more new crust forms, it begins to push the older crust out of the way. In the process, tectonic plates and the continents riding on top of them get pushed along. Now, on the other side of South America, over by the Pacific, there is the Nazca Plate. It's heavier, and it's moving eastward. Since it is denser, it is sliding underneath the South American Plate. This entire process is called subduction, and it's happening at a rate of about 3 inches per year. By the way, the collision between these two plates is what's behind all those breathtaking volcanoes scattered throughout the Andes, and it's also making the continent move. So, if everything goes according to plan, projections show that South America will end up more centered in the Pacific Ocean in the future. But some models suggest something way crazier. Before we get into that, though, we need to clear something up. Why on Earth isn't Africa following in South America's footsteps? I mean, shouldn't it be drifting west too? Well, not quite. Africa is doing its own thing, because it sits on the African plate. So the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is located between those two continents. And just like it pushes the South American plate, it also pushes the African plate, but in the opposite direction. It's like this ridge is trying to split up two ex-besties, you know? But there's more. Africa is also being influenced by the East African Rift. That's one of those massive cracks we talked about earlier. But it's happening on land, which makes it extra dramatic. This is what's causing the continent to slowly split apart. It's a long story, but let's just say the rift is pulling Africa in more directions than South America ever had to deal with. Okay, now it is finally time to talk about that crazier thing that might happen to South America and everything around it in the future. Theory number one. It could break away from North America. I know, super dramatic, but don't panic. We're talking hundreds of millions of years from now, and I won't be around. You see, both continents are moving in the same general direction, but at different speeds. The North American plate is cruising along at about 1 inch per year, while South America is moving a bit faster. So even though they're heading the same way, they are not keeping pace. Over time, as the Atlantic Ocean continues to widen and the Pacific keeps shrinking, all this tectonic movement could eventually pull the Americas apart. Theory number 2 marine life could go through some major changes. Right now, the Americas act as kind of a giant wall between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. Because of that, sea animals have evolved differently on each side. Take the green sea turtle, for example. The ones living in the Atlantic tend to be bigger and lighter in color. Meanwhile, their Pacific cousins are usually smaller and darker. But if, one day, there is no land blocking these two populations from mixing, they would end up with brand new migration routes, new nesting spots, and a lot more overlap in their territories. Now, multiply that scenario by hundreds of other species, and things could really get shaken up. We're talking about new interactions, unexpected competition, and maybe even the rise of entirely new species. All right, theory number three. America might meet Africa again. Right now, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is busy creating a new seafloor, and because of that, 
the Atlantic Ocean is slowly getting wider. But in about 125 million years, scientists believe that process could come to a stop. Instead of the seafloor spreading apart, the ocean floor might start getting pulled under the continents. When that happens, the Atlantic will stop growing and start shrinking. And the water section between South America and Africa is likely to be the first part pulled beneath the land. That means the Americas and Africa could meet again. And when that happens, border countries could turn into super shaky places, with earthquakes happening all the time and brand new volcanoes popping up left and right. The eastern United States would no longer be known for the peaceful green slopes of the Appalachians, but for snow-covered giants that occasionally spew lava and ash, more like the Cascade Range out west. Countries would end up with totally new neighbors. Brazil might line up with Nigeria and Cameroon. Uruguay could be sitting right next to Angola. And Argentina might be sharing a border with South Africa. So if these two continents really do merge, how intense would that be? Well, for starters, this new supercontinent would instantly become the biggest one on Earth, about one and a half times the size of Asia. And chances are, a brand new mountain range would form right where the continents meet, creating a natural border between nations. Being part of the same massive continent could make a lot of things way easier. For one, tourism could totally take off. People traveling between countries by land without needing pricey plane tickets could be a game-changer. But it wouldn't stop there. Other types of economic activity could get a major boost, too. Now, on one side, we have South America, which already produces and sells a wide variety of foods, from wheat to bananas, beef, cocoa, soybeans, hey, you name it. On the other side, there is Africa, exporting things like textiles and clothing. That alone would make them a super powerful block when it comes to trading raw goods. But can you name another important thing these two hmm. continents have in common? Yep, petroleum. Countries in South America, like Brazil, Venezuela, and Colombia, are major oil exporters. And over in Africa, you've got Nigeria, Algeria, and Libya doing the same. Now, can you see just how powerful that kind of union could be? Meanwhile, let's talk about animals. These two massive lands coming together could lead us to wild meetups. Like a capybara sharing space with a Nile crocodile. Or a sloth seeing a hyena from the top of a tree. This could even lead to new animal hybrids showing up, like a cabbie crocodile or a sloth hyena. Okay, those weren't the cleverest names, and honestly, these animals wouldn't be able to mate or even wouldn't want to. But you get the point, right? It's not all positive, unfortunately. New species showing up could become predators, competitors, or even parasites to the native plants and animals. It would take a long time for things to settle into a new balance in those border regions. But honestly, no one really knows how long it would take. The only thing I do know is, neither of us will be around to see it. Which is okay. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.